Hi there, my name is Conrad and in this video I'm going to show you how to find your .nuke folder. I'm also going to show you some very basic command line navigation and a few keyboard shortcuts and Mac finder tips that you might not know. The .nuke folder is created automatically when Nuke is installed and you'll need to access it when you want to start customizing things. This is where you can put plugins and gizmos and Python scripts that you want to use in Nuke. It's also where the init.py and menu.py files are saved. These are Python scripts that you can edit to modify how Nuke works for you. This video is going to be really basic. We aren't going to get into any of the customization stuff yet, but knowing how to find the .nuke folder in the first place is really important and initially not so obvious. I'm making this video on a Mac, and there will be a couple of Mac specific things, but generally the concepts are the same on Windows and Linux too. As well as using Finder, the Mac file browser, I'm also going to show you how to use the terminal. The terminal is the Mac command line prompt, which can also be used to navigate and manipulate directories and files. It can be daunting and confusing at first, but it can also be very powerful once you get to know it. It works much like the terminal in Linux, and as most large VFX studios use Linux, having a basic knowledge of the command line can be very useful. I won't go into much detail with the commands that I do use in terminal, but hopefully just seeing it in action will be quite helpful. As a quick aside, I've always used the words terminal and shell interchangeably, but I just checked for this video and they don't quite mean the same thing. But at this level, we can assume that they are the same thing. But if you hear someone talking about the shell, they usually also mean the command line or the terminal. Nuke creates the .nuke folder in your home directory. This is the directory associated with your login on the computer. For this video, I've created an account called demo. On a Mac, the users directories are inside a directory called users at the top level of your local hard drive. By default, the terminal starts in your user directory. Let's open a terminal window. You can find the terminal in the utilities directory in the applications directory. The terminal uses a tilde character, that little squiggly looking hyphen, as a shortcut for your home directory. So you can see that the prompt is already at that level in the file structure. If I type pwd for present working directory and hit enter, the prompt will show you the complete path to where we currently are, users forward slash demo. I'm also going to open a new finder window by clicking on the desktop and using the keyboard shortcut command and n. I've set my finder up to always jump to my home directory whenever I open a new window, but if yours goes somewhere else by default, you can click on your username at the side here to take you to your home directory. In Finder, I can go to the View menu at the top and choose Show Path Bar to display the full location of the folder at the bottom of the window. If you're working in a big studio, your home directory probably won't be on your local machine. It'll be somewhere on the network. The location of the directory will be different, but the structure inside will be the same. I said that the .nuke folder should be in this directory, but we can't see it in the Finder, and if I type ls in the terminal to list the contents of the current location, it doesn't show up in the list either. That's because the directory is hidden. Any directory or file with a dot at the start of the file name is hidden by default. These are usually files or folders that users generally don't need to work with all the time, and which you wouldn't want to delete or edit without meaning to. So hiding them keeps things tidy and prevents accidents. So how do we actually use them? Well, because we know the directory exists, we can navigate to it directly. In the terminal, we use the cd command to change directory, so we can type cd space dot nuke and hit enter, and it will move into the dot nuke directory even though we can't see it. You can see that the tilde in the prompt has changed to dot nuke to show us where we are. In Finder, I can choose go to folder from the go menu and type dot nuke and it will take me there. On Windows or Linux, there is usually a file path bar where you can type a file path in directly. In there, you can just add slash dot nuke after the name of your home directory to jump into the folder. But there are also ways to show hidden files and directories, so you don't just have to guess if they are there or not. In the terminal, let's go back up to our home directory by typing cd space dot dot. This takes us up one level from where we are currently. Previously, we used the ls command to list all the files and directories in our home directory, but it didn't show us the .nuke folder. We can use ls again, but this time if we add a dash a after the command, we will tell it to list all. 
Now when we hit enter, you can see that the list includes all of the hidden files and directories, including the .nuke. In Finder, we can use the keyboard shortcut Command and Up to move us back up into our home directory. And because we've just come from the .nuke folder, it's now visible. But if we leave the home directory and then come back, the .nuke folder is gone again. But we can use the keyboard shortcut Command plus Shift plus period to toggle the visibility of all hidden files and directories. In Windows and Linux, there are also options to show hidden files in the file browser too, often hidden in a right-click menu. Let's go back into our .nuke directory. You can see that there are already some files here. Your user preferences are saved here, and a file that stores information about how your interface is set up is also here. If you've already started to customize Nuke, or perhaps your studio has added some customizations for you, you will also probably see init.py and menu.py. These are the Python scripts that you can modify to add customizations. If they aren't there already, you can easily create them using a text editor. If you want to install plugins or gizmos, these will usually go inside your .nuke folder too, and you can create separate subfolders to keep them organized. These are all topics for future videos, but at least now you know where your .nuke folder is and how to get to it. I hope you found this quick tip useful. If you did, please hit subscribe so you don't miss more of my Nuke tip videos in the future. Thanks for watching.